Hey everybody, in the last video we looked at the hand mold that I had made and then unfortunately wrecked. Uh, today I wanted to share a video with you creating the replacement hand mold for that. Uh All right, so as we talked about in the last video, uh, it's, a, it's a standard, it's a pretty easy process to do. Um, find a subject that's willing to let you cast uh, their hand um, and then, uh, you know, walk through the process. There's lots of videos out there on the internet on how to do this. Uh, Smooth On themselves has classes that you can attend if you are new to the process. Um, this is certainly not meant to be a full-blown training video but uh, I think it was it was an interesting reference it's an interesting way to do it so um, this is actually the second time I've casted her hand now um, the, the second uh, body casting that I've ever done so I wanted to to film it and share it with everybody so I thought it would just be interesting to take a look at so what we have here is you take the uh, subject's hand or you know body part and you want to um, grease it up with some kind of release agent uh, body excuse me smooth on makes a product that uh, is a, a proper release agent um, for the skin it's uh, it's essentially Vaseline or very good high-end Vaseline um, you want to make sure that you get it into all the cracks and crevices and on over the hair um, this product is really good for releasing from things like uh, eyebrows or things like that so um, if you're gonna do a face casting the next step is to mix the um, the parts together. It comes in two parts, A and B. You can mix it either by volume or by weight. In this case, I knew I was going to do two passes, uh, so I went ahead and created uh, two separate parts. Um, I had you know one mixture, two mixtures, uh, and then I mixed one together. Um, the first problem that you have is uh, it's it's very liquidy. Uh, as you can see, it's wanting just to sort of run right through the fingers, uh, through the spaces. Um, so it's pretty tough at first, at least that's what I found. It was tough at first to try to get um, that detail. Um, so I guess uh, the the only advice that, that I have, I don't know if this is the proper technique, but you'll notice uh, she's rotating her hand uh, quite a bit in the video, and that's really just to see if we can get the the material to stay in place uh, while it kind of sets up a little bit. Um, and that's also why I wanted to do multiple passes so I could get sort of a thin layer um, on as a base, um, hopefully get the detail of the of the fingers um, and of the hand and get it in the correct position. And then as it starts to sort of set up and, and thicken up, um, you can kind of get it to, you know, act, uh, act the way you want it to and get it to stay where you want it to stay. So there was a lot of uh, hand rotating and scraping up off the off the uh, table and, and kind of dumping it back on um, and then sort of uh, just trying to get it to to stay where we wanted it to stay um, but you'll notice uh, after a couple minutes this this particular um, material is the standard time so this is uh, for five minutes it takes to set up each layer um, so we did that uh, made a pretty decent decent glove and then uh, we had the second coat. The second coat, uh, I really wanted to build up. You'll notice, um, you can see in the shot here, the first coat, there's still some skin showing on the thumb and uh, there's not a lot of material between the thumb and uh, fingers. So I wanted to really build up that area and also the wrist area, which is what I'm doing now. I wanted to make sure that area was, uh, had a pretty thick uh, coating on it because that's sort of going to be the entry point right for all the uh, material and all the bones and things that I'm going to put into it so I want to make sure that's got um, got some good thickness to it so that's kind of what I'm doing here is just uh, going around making sure all the gaps are filled um, the fingers are filled in appropriately and working to make sure that I get a good um, level of material between the thumb and the fingers because that's one thing I noticed in my previous attempt, I didn't have that. Um, the thumb was sort of off on its own, and in some of the early castings, it would just sort of fall off because uh, it was sort of just hanging out there. Um, so I wanted to really kind of beef that up. I also had uh, the hand in a little bit of a different orientation. Um, the last uh, mold was a little bit, the fingers were spread a little bit wider. This, they're a little bit tighter, uh, so hopefully that will help as well as I cast it. I haven't made a cast yet, or excuse me, I haven't made a duplicate yet. Um, that will be ha happening hopefully in the next few days. And uh, so yeah, hopefully that will work out well. But we, um, 
you know, use as many passes as you need to. Like I said, in my, in my case, I did uh, two, um, filling in all the cracks and crevices uh, as needed. So after that dries, the next step is to create the, the plaster cast. And <clears throat> Smooth On also sells these plaster band-aids you can get these online anywhere as well. Um, I don't believe there's really anything special about um, what's purchased through uh, Smooth On. It's just convenient. They have everything that you need. Um, <clears throat> so basically, what I it comes in a comes in a roll, um, kind of like a, a a typical bandage, um, where it's you know it's just a roll of material, and I just cut it up into various uh, sizes. I think it's three or four inches uh, thick-ish. And um, just go ahead and, uh, and start laying it out, uh, dip it in water, of course, it's plaster-based, and then put it on. One thing I wanted to, to mention is creating the parting line. This is, this is pretty important. You wanna make sure that you're creating a pretty uh, solid, thick line around the, um, the perimeter of your uh, mold. So you create the parting line. Uh, if you'll notice what I'm doing, uh, you can kind of see it's sticking out there at the top of the of the hand. Um, <clears throat> what I do is I throw a piece of plaster uh, bandage on there, get it nice and wet, and then sort of pinch it with my fingers um, to get it to uh, to make a little lip. Um, the reason that this is important because we need the mold to come in half at the end, right? So otherwise we are just making a cast <laughs> and we don't want her hand in a cast. We want it to be able to come out. Um, we were kind of joking about that when we made this. If I, if I screwed it up, that would be a very interesting uh, conversation at the hospital of, you know, trying to get the cast removed that I put on in my, in my basement. So, um, make sure that you create your parting lines, uh, accordingly. Um, it's not difficult. Uh, it's just, uh, it's an important step. Um, you know, and uh, just can't overemphasize it. So I wanted to make sure that it get in there. Um, but then, yeah, just uh, sort of keep beefing it up, uh, make it fairly thick. Uh, it needs to be, the whole point of the cast, the plaster cast is to add some rigidity to the um, mold itself, because as we talked about in the last video, uh, this is just silicone rubber. So as I set this up and I start dumping material in here, um, it's going to want to flex and, and move about. Um, so the whole point of the plaster is really just to add some rigidity to the, uh, to the cast or to the mold. Uh, so that, that way it doesn't just kind of flop about while you're, while you're trying to make your duplicate. So yeah, you do that. Um, I like to use a hairdryer to, uh, to kind of speed up the drying process. Um, the other uh, important part is applying the release agent to the um, parting line. So make sure that you get that uh, well covered um, in uh, release agent. You probably could just use Vaseline at this point since it's not really uh, needing to be released from like hair or anything like that of the human human body. But uh, it's, it's important to release it from itself because obviously plaster sticks to plaster, right? That's the point. So make sure that you grease up that uh, that parting line really well, um, and uh, that way you can get it uh, get it separate. Um, you almost know, notice to do a little bit of trimming to make sure that it's going to come apart correctly. <clears throat> uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, making molds, uh, this is all pretty standard stuff. Uh, there's lots of videos out there on how to make a two-part mold. Um, it's kind of what we're sort of doing here because um, it's going to be separated. But uh, yeah, you just do the second coat and start um, start laying it back together. Uh, so you do that, and then eventually you get um, you know the two parts together. <clears throat> then uh, what I what I did is that you go around and uh, make sure it's nice and dry or pretty dry. Um, I don't let it um, set up a hundred percent. I do let it uh, get really stiff and rigid. But um, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit more cautious. I want to make sure that I can get her hand out. Uh, so I, while it's still a little bit pliable, um, I, I start doing the demolding process. And that's it. You'll notice I had a screwdriver in there. And I just kind of pry the mold apart, work them apart, um, make sure that uh, they come apart smoothly. I make a little uh, incision down the side of the, um, the material so she can wiggle her hand out. And, uh, and that's basically it. So it's pretty pretty easy. Uh, the entire process took us about an hour-ish. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not 
difficult. So if, you know, I encourage you to try it. Um, wasn't overly expensive either. I did um, her hand. So this is enough material to do uh, a full size human hand. Uh, and this was the sample pack. So if you look online and you take a look at um, the different levels, because you can get them by the quart, the gallon, whatever, you only really need the sample size. Uh, and that, that was enough to do this. And then I used one roll of bandages um, for this as well. And I'll put the links in the description as to you know where I got it and um, things like that. So, but yeah, it was, it was pretty easy. Uh, like I said, it took about an hour. Um, so yeah, the next step is going to be to uh, cast this up and uh, put some uh, bones in here, um, which is what these guys are for right here. Uh, this will be the skeleton of her new hand. So we'll get that shoved into there and uh, hopefully get a new hand created in uh, the next couple of days. So thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you have any comments, questions, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this episode of the Mayhem Lab. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like, and we will produce more videos like this one. Also, please consider clicking subscribe so you don't miss our latest content.